Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much for having me and allowing me to uh, tell you a little bit about how the city of Rotterdam implemented uh, nature-based solutions. Uh, so in this presentation, I will tell you a little bit about our city, a little bit about the challenges we face, and a little bit about the solutions we implemented and what our experiences are. Next, please. Next, please. Uh, let me first introduce the city to you. Uh, Rotterdam is an old city which was, found on, was founded on a river bank of the river Rotter. That is where the name came from. Um, and as you can see in the picture, there is a lot of water in the city. Water brought a lot of prosperity to the city through trade. But it, was, it has also always been a large threat. Since Rotterdam is in the delta of the River Meuse and the River Rhine, it's the largest river delta in Europe, and the city is lying two to seven meters below sea level, you can, I think, imagine that uh, dealing with water in the city has always been a big issue. And water and nature are very much related, and so we have an excellent chance, but also a lot of um, challenges to face in that area, because we not only try to uh, benefit from the water in the city, but we also have to protect ourselves against it by a complex system of dikes and levees, storm surge barriers and things like that. I will come back to that later. Next, please. Um, but it was not so much the water that defined how the city is designed today. It was the bombing that took place during the Second World War and that destroyed the complete center of uh, the city. Everything was gone and we had to um, design a new city center. And the choice was made uh, then to not rebuild the city as it were before the war, but to rebuild the city center in a very modern way, like an American city. Next, please. And so we made a choice, uh, the people who were in charge then made a choice for a very modern street grid uh, to get rid of a lot of the inner city canals and to focus on modern architecture. It's one of the main features of the city today. Rotterdam has a lot of modern uh, tourist tracking, uh, modern architecture, but it's all stone and concrete. And there is not so much green in the city center. Next, please. Um, so it was a huge challenge to make and keep the city also an attractive place for people to live because right after the war, it was um, a, a choice that uh, in the city center you mainly have offices and people live on the outer skirts of the city. But today, we think it's really important to have people living in our city center. So we had to reinvest and bring the people back to the city center. And that makes clear that people, uh, when they want to live in the city center, they do want to live there, but it has to be a really attractive place to live. And for a place to be attractive, green is a very important issue. Uh, it has... Yes, please go to the next. Thank you. Next, please. Um, because it is also one of the biggest challenges we face at the moment. In the city center, where we want and we have the most people living and working and visiting, we have the least green. So that is one of our main challenges. And it's for two reasons that it is a big challenge. First. When you ask people what makes their uh, living environment attractive, they always mention green as a very important factor. Green makes pe people feel and be healthier, happier. Uh, they want uh, space for, for leisure and to spend their free time in parks, in green areas, and they want them nearby. So it's a very important factor to have to be attractive as a city for people to come and to live. On the other hand, uh, since Rotterdam is lying two to seven meters below sea level and the climate is changing, we do face a huge challenge in um, getting uh, our city being resilient towards that climate change. We have a huge management, water management issue there in place. Next, please. We're working very hard on that. Since 15 years, we are working on an integrated uh, plan on climate and climate adaptation. Uh, we are working towards a resilient city, being resilient towards climate change. And in that plan, we are integrated urban planning, water management, and greening the city together. 
so to find smart solutions for a number of problems and not only working on water management separately and working on green areas separately but integrate them in our urban planning strategy next please and so i will uh, would like to uh, show some of the solutions that are in place already to you and some of the plans we have uh, we focused in our climate adaptation plan integrated with our urban planning um, uh, with, with our urban plan, uh, we focused on multifunctional solutions. Try to make as much use of the space uh, that you can. Um, and so we tried to make logical combinations like make a park with a lot of green and a lot of water, then you have green area and water storage facility at the same place. Um, but I think more innovative is the combination of living and water in the Netherlands, uh, people like to live near the water, they like to live on the water, they don't mind floating houses, uh, they like to be with the water. It adds value to their living environment and to their houses, so it's a strong combination to plan for water in residential areas. And we combined uh, things like, as you can see here on the slide, it's a Olympic rowing facility, um, and it's at the same time a regional water storage facility. Uh, it is for seasonal water storage. It's very important for the water management in the city. And by combining the funding and by combining the planning for both the seasonal water storage and the rowing facility, it was made easier to achieve both goals. Next, please. In the inner city, we also have some new solutions in place. Uh, we designed the concept of a water square. A water square is a square or a plaza where people during a normal day when there are no extreme weather conditions can uh, walk, can sit under trees, can sit in parks, um, can spend their free time where there can be, uh, uh, there can be sports activities and things like that. And then when it starts raining, the water square is designed in a way it has low-lying parts and they can be filled up with water so that the stormwater runoff from the buildings and the surroundings can be led towards, for example, the basketball field in the left for you, the left uh, half of the slide. In the basketball field, it will fill up with water. Please, can I see the next slide? And it will look like this. Then you will have a completely different outlook. You have a lot of water in the square. It will stay there for two days. It will be uh, pumped out uh, and after that you can use the square as a normal square again. So it's a multifunctional use of space and what was special in this case is, was that the design of the square was made in a strong participation with the communities that are living uh, and are using the square from the direct environment. Next please. Um, we also have in place a strong green roof program. program. We try to make as many roofs green in the city as we possibly can. We have a subsidy in place for private parties who want to do so. And also there we try to make, uh, we, we try to combine as much, much functions as we can on the same square meter. For example, what you see here is a shopping mall. Uh, it's about one kilometer long. There is a, a park on the roof. It uh, serves as a park for the area uh, because it's a very high, uh, densely built area just behind the park. The people who live there, they can use the park for leisure. Um, and the whole structure is uh, at the same time a barrier, a dike, which protects the area behind the dike from getting flooded by the river and the sea. Um, we also have some um, city farming activities going on on the tops of office buildings right in the city center. So it's a very nice combination of working and living. And it's also very good. It gives the whole city a greener view and a greener look, especially from high-rise buildings. It's good for air quality. It's good for energy saving in the buildings. And very important, it's very good for retention of stormwater, um, so it's extra water storage space in the city where we do not have a lot of uh, possibilities for water storage. Next please. Um, we are investing in new innovations in floating concepts, floating buildings, 
which is very important in a city with a very large river, which is in an open connection to the sea. You have tidal movements there, so we are experimenting with stable floating buildings, uh, but we are also experimenting with floating parks and floating trees. So to be flexible and to introduce green concepts in areas where we don't have the space on land, maybe we have the space on the water and we can add green there. So that is another example of what we are experimenting with. Next, please. Um, this is a plan we hope to uh, complete next year. Uh, we are uh, we from the we got funding for this plan from the uh, Life Urban Adapt uh, program from the European Commission, and it's a it was a park that was refurbished. The park was already in place, but we added a, a tidal channel where the tide of the river and the sea comes in and goes out and thus leaves sediments there and builds new nature. And every now and then when we have a very extreme weather, uh, when we have extreme weather circumstances, that there will be a very strong flow of water and all these sediments will be flown out again and the whole process starts all over again. So it's a very natural um, area where people like to go and recreate and feel in nature where they in fact are in the city center because it's it's over here it's in the middle of it's in the middle of the city actually next please i began my presentation with showing you that rotterdam has a lot of uh, work to do for protecting itself uh, against water especially with sea level rise and, and and climate change and we have to keep our dikes strong and, and, uh, uh, and safe for the next decades to come. And we have some issues there, the red, the red areas we have to work on. Next, please. And whereas in the past we used to make our dikes stronger by making them higher with concrete um, and all hard material, today we are more building with nature to reinforce our dikes. We don't make them higher, we make them wider. And we do that by adding on the water side um, natural areas which make the dike structures very, very strong and they make them almost unbreakable. And it's also a very nice way of making the river in the city, um, it, it gets a more natural look and feel, it adds recreational space right in your city. Uh, so it's an excellent example, I think, of building with nature in a city. And our last project is also a tidal park, a new park that will be built on a small island in the middle of the River Meuse, also in the middle of the city centre. It's a small island, but very popular for people to go on a Sunday or on another day, so they don't have to leave the city to go to a green area. They can do it right in the city centre. We heard the example from Lyon. It's, I think, a little bit the same idea. Um, and it's also something that we hope to complete next year. So I think by, I've shown you, by showing you a couple of examples that we as a city are trying to work very hard on urban development, making our economy stronger, making our city more attractive, and showing you that it can very well go together with greening your city and make the look of your city softer and more attractive. And you're very welcome to all come over to Rotterdam and have a look for yourself. Thank you very much.